Hey Code Crew, what's up? It's Chris here. Now this video is a little bit different from our usual videos where you see the backdrop in the back and the app frames. This is still the same room. It's just that um, I'm not using the computer today because in this lesson, I wanna tell you about what we're going to be building in this series. I realized that um, I hadn't really talked about that. Uh, all I told you in the previous lesson was that we were going to incorporate Firebase authentication with a custom login UI, and we're going to use Firestore to store our data. Now, those two things are true, um, but I didn't just wanna build a demo demonstrating those things. I wanted to actually build a full-fledged app, uh, something that we could submit to the App Store, um, and that way it I think it's a lot more practical and you can also see things from end to end. So today I'm going to be talking about the app idea which we're going to be building. Now there was such a broad spectrum of things that I could do with only the requirements of authentication and storing data using Firestore, literally any app that has login and has data. So I really had a hard time thinking of an app idea that was not too big in scope and that wasn't too small that it would be too trivial and wouldn't be useful at all. Um, I went through a whole bunch of different ideas but every time I did that, uh, I just started adding more and more things and I know it would take a lot of time to build. And the problem with that, it's not that I don't wanna show you guys how to build a really complex app. It's just that those things would take um, a pretty long time and there is a high chance that I won't finish it um, because it's something that I struggle with um, and that is finishing projects. So what I want to train myself to do is to um, not to bite off more than I can chew, uh, is to be really specific about the feature set that I want to implement as a kind of V1 a minimum viable product and submit it to the App Store and get it out there um, and really go through that process and build up my habit of finishing my projects and shipping it. Um, and I, I think that's not something that's uncommon to a lot of people. I, I think I, you know, game developers especially, I know they have a lot of um, half finished games or game prototypes lying around and they're notorious for having to build up this habit of completing their games and shipping it. And so I have the same problem here with apps. I want to build something that is small enough that I can publish. Now, I can, I can tell you some of the ideas that I did have. I have this notebook that I just write in some of the time and just whenever I have an idea. Now, the first idea I had was a poll app. And that is basically the way I described it here in the book was a crowdsource a decision on your undecided matters. So I know a lot of the time, um, especially if you've got a significant other, they'll come to you and ask you, oh, should I wear this or wear that? <laughs> and so, you know, me being so tired of answering those types of questions, I'm not so much now, but in more so in the past, um, this app would basically allow the user to take two photos um, of, of two different decisions post it and have their friends kind of vote on it. So that would be the poll part of it. And my name that I thought of for that app was this or that. So it's basically two simple decisions. Now I started going kind of out of hand with this because there's so much that you can do with this. It might sound like a simple idea, but even the notion of um, being able to add friends, um, then it seems like such a simple feature, but you have to think about what that entails, right? Um, being able to add a friend means that you have to uh, implement the ability to send a friend request and then have the other person accept or reject it. Um, it also brings into question what sorts of things do you want to allow other people to see? Uh, are you, is it going to be like a free for all? Like just think about Facebook's own privacy settings. Um, even even having a friend on Facebook, you have close knit circles and you have, um, you have different, different groups, I think, different privacy settings. Now, I, I don't use Facebook that much, but I, I know that they have different privacy settings even within your friends. So 
I think there's a notion of friends and close friends or something like that. I might be wrong on that, but so anyways, that was that idea. Another one was a wine library type of app um, where you can uh, basically add wines from your wine collection, uh, take a photo of the bottle and label and put your tasting notes and all of that stuff on it. Um, and it would basically just keep track of your collection of wine or maybe wines that you want to try. Now, I'm not a huge wine connoisseur myself, but I can see that this app, you know, I enjoy the glass of wine from time to time. And my own difficulty is that um, I might try a bottle and I really like it, but I don't really keep track of it. I don't remember. I, th I always throw away the bottles. I don't keep them. And then the next time I want to buy wine, I forget what that was. <laughs> and so, you know, this was something that was going to help me keep track of the ones that I do like, that I have enjoyed. Um, but I can see this being an app that could be adapted for different purposes. Um, maybe collectors who collect different things just as a way for them to keep track of a collection of something. You know, fun tip, at one point, I actually collected Starbucks cards. Now, uh, these are the little gift cards that you can get at Starbucks and they have little different designs on them. These days, they produce so many different designs that I kind of gave up. But back then, um, in the early days, there weren't as many designs, so it definitely was collectible. And the cool thing was that every country would have their own designs and their own Starbucks cards. And so it was fun getting the cards from like all over the world. So that was something that I collected at one point. Uh, I also considered continuing my Pomodoro timer app. Now that is definitely something that I want to continue. And for those of you guys who have been watching this channel for a little longer, you know that about maybe over six months ago, maybe eight months ago, I was doing live streams every week where we were going to build an app together and we were going to submit it to the app store. Um, and we got so far as determining the feature set and doing some design work on it, but and then an early prototype for uh, working with timers in the background, even when your app is off. We did some work with that, but it was never completed. So another testament to my inability to finish projects. Uh, what I make up for that though is that I won't give up. So it's always in the back of my mind and I am definitely going to come back and finish this project. So finally, the idea that I did arrive at for this Firestore and authentication series is something that I've actually been wanting to do myself. Um, and it's something that I've been, I wouldn't say struggling, I'm not act actively trying to do this, but it's something that I can see the benefits of, and that is a daily gratitude journal. So, you know, we have so much to be thankful for, no matter what our situation is. Um, there's always going to be things that we want, things that we want to achieve, or maybe material things that we want in life, uh, goals that we haven't hit yet, but I think that also oftentimes um, takes us away from looking at what we do have because there are people who are less fortunate than us who have less than us and they would just love to have just the ability to walk. For example, someone who might not be in very good health just walking to the bathroom by themselves or maybe being able to enjoy oranges. For example, someone who has stomach problems who can't take that sort of citric acid, um, that acidity. and so. I think there are there's a lot for all of us to be thankful for, um, things that we kind of take for granted and we don't notice from day to day. Uh, family, right? A lot of people have lost loved ones and things like that. And uh, sometimes you, you just don't know what you have until it's gone, right? I think that saying is so true. Um, so this gratitude journal, normally that's something that's kind of private, I would say. but. The idea here is a social gratitude journal. And the reason I say social is because I think this will be a good experiment because I think in sharing what you're grateful for, it makes other people who read that reflect on their life and you know if that's something that they can be uh, grateful for as well. And in addition to being able to see what other people are grateful for, and you can obviously write your own um, post, you'll only be able to like 
each other's posts. And I use the term like very loosely because I don't know if it's gonna be, you know, like thumbs up or high five or something like that, but some sort of props. And in posting what you're uh, grateful for and then receiving, you know, thanks or receiving um, hand claps or high fives for that, um, I think that will also reinforce your good vibes, A, um, and also reinforce your want to post again the next day. And uh, the idea of the app is to hopefully build up your habit to have a daily habit to th think about what you're grateful for. So this one I think is a simple app to implement. Um, I can see a use for it certainly for myself. Um, I think it'll be a fun experiment to see if um, to see if people like to do this in a social sort of way um, versus in a private sort of way. So let me go through kind of like a V1, what features I had in mind. So obviously we have creating an account and logging in. Um, then you'd be able to see a list of posts by other people. And then you'd be able to obviously like a post, whether that um, that is thanking or hand clapping remains to be seen. Uh, you're going to be able to write a new post, your own, you know, what you're grateful for. And then we're going to also have your profile. And that's just going to be your username, which you can edit, maybe some stats, like how many times you've posted, what's your longest streak, how many hand claps or likes or high fives you've received, uh, ability to delete your account. I think that's important now due to privacy and all of that. Um, and also to be able to see a list of your own posts and to be able to delete them. Uh, and finally, just a welcome sort of tutorial screen the minute you create your account, just to give you an overview of what the different tabs do, how you use the app and what it's for and that sort of thing. So that's it. Like that's the app in its whole and, and that's where I want to get it to, uh, to be able to publish that into the app store. Um, I do have some V2 ideas such as private only posts. So maybe you're posting something sensitive, but you still want to write it. Um, if you set it to like private only, then it's only going to show up for you. Like you'll be able to see it in your post feed, but then it won't be social. It won't, other people are not going to see that. Uh, maybe commenting, maybe profile photos, uh, push notifications so that when you post something, it's going to notify other people. Uh, reminder notifications, so something that would remind you each day to write what you're grateful for. Um, and then maybe just collapsible posts because I'm not planning to complicate it further by allowing you to drill into a post. I'm just going to put the full text um, in the list. Now, if you have more suggestions and ideas for features and V2 ideas, please drop me a comment below and let me know. Um, I definitely have a lot to think about. There's there's a lot more I know that I can do with this. For the V1, however, I want to make it um, just that feature set because I think that's kind of the minimum amount of features that's going to make it useful. And I want to polish it. I want to make it like really, um, really fluid and really nice to use and so that you want to keep using it. So that's the idea there. I hope that that's something that you're interested in and if not I hope you will even stick around just to figure out how to do some of these features from a technical standpoint because you can definitely adapt what you learn um, to your own app idea and I think it's going to be really fun for us to get to the end here and then submit the app together I'll show you guys how to write all the metadata create the screenshots write the description submit it from Xcode um, and then we'll, we'll hopefully get it approved. I haven't done any sort of competitor analysis. Um, I haven't seen what other gratitude journal apps out there do. I haven't thought about how to monetize this app or anything like that. The, the goal isn't really f for me to make any money off of it. Um, I, I really just want to build up the habit of finishing my apps, publishing them. Um, and at the same time, being able to teach you guys different features. Uh, and I think also one more thing is that by making this app shorter, I am able to finish it and then move on and um, create a different app tutorial series for you guys showing a completely different set of features. If we were to uh, really just work on this and, and do a big complex app, it'd probably take up months and months and then 
this will be the only thing you guys see on the YouTube channel for like half the year. So, you know, I, I think that's the other benefit of doing a short feature set. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that. If so, please give me a like, um, subscribe if you want to see the future videos. Don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you know when the next video comes up. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.